Amen. Amen. To, be, to be that light in someone's life because there's, there's already enough darkness out there in the world. Amen. Yeah. Man, people need some light in their life. People need some fire in their life. Amen. Uh, yeah. pe people want to be connected with people that send that light and on that fire. Amen. Amen. Uh, you can say what you want. Let the devil try to fool you all you want. But man, people want that. People want to be around that. Amen. People like to be around people that's motivated and positive and on fire for the Lord. Amen. Amen. The, the world will tell you they don't want it, but I'm going to tell you right now. You get to talking about the Lord around people that, that ain't saved. You get to talking around people about the Lord that ain't saved. I'm going to say that one more time. Yeah. Brother, I'm going to tell you something. They use a pull up like a little bit of antenna because you know why? They know the true people that's on fire for God. Amen. Amen. And man, they need some fire in this world. Amen. Amen. We need we need it. There's every time we need to get back excited and be cheerful for the Lord and have that light shining and be on fire for God. Man, this is the day. Amen. Yes, it we is. need some fire back in our churches. Amen. We need some fire back in our people. Amen. Amen. Not just in pastors. Everybody, I hear people all the time looking for a pastor that's on fire. They want a pastor that's a ball of fire. Yep. They want a pastor that's on fire. Well, I want a church that's on fire. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Because it takes more than a pastor to have a church on fire. Amen. It takes a church. walks into church with a smile and a cheerful uh, smile and everything else. I want the whole church Amen. excited tonight. Amen. Amen. I want to be a part of it. I don't want to be the only one. I just want to be a part of it. Right. Amen. Right. What do y'all got a little fire you want to spread tonight? I'll sit yes, down. <laughs> like, whoa, Pastor, get carried away. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm going to do my very best tonight to try to finish up the last part, I was hoping I'd do it this morning, but I kind of felt yesterday I wasn't prepared to get it all done. But we're going to finish up our third part of this uh, self-control series. And I just want to retouch on a couple things before. If you want to go ahead tonight and turn your Bible to two places so you know exactly where we are. We're going to start tonight in Psalms chapter 119, just verse 1 through 3. And then we're going to end in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 28. I mean 21, excuse me. 15 through 21. And for the last three services, we've been talking about self-control and discipline ourselves and, you know, how we must be under control and how we must discipline ourselves. Amen? Everybody get in there let me know. We got plenty of time tonight. I don't have a whole lot left, but I really felt like the last couple of things of this message was just as strong as the Wednesday night and this morning. Psalms chapter 119. One through three. One, two, and three. And the last two parts of this this morning we, we finished up on self-control of your tongue. And we know now, since this morning, we know that I felt like that message was kind of rough a little bit, don't get me wrong. But it's essential for us to know that we have power with our tongue. Amen? Amen. But what we have to remember from this morning, in that closing, we have to remember that we have to live with the consequences of everything that we say to somebody. That's really the headline of that message from this morning. Is no matter what you do or say, you're going to have to live with the consequences of everything that you speak. Matter of fact, the book of Matthew that I didn't get to this morning also tells us that we shall be judged of every word because we will give an account of it. We'll give an account of everything we say. Everything, everybody we slandered, everything that we spoke of, that was wrong and evil, we shall give an account of it. So just remember that. That should enlighten us, because I'm not going to get back into that tonight, but that should enlighten us to understand, like I said this morning in closing, before the next time you go to speak, remember, is this going to hurt somebody, or is this going to help somebody? Before you speak the words that you may want to speak. Also remember that you will have consequences behind everything you do and everything you say. You shall have a given account of everything that you do and say. 
Amen. And tonight, the last two parts of this is knowing and obeying God's word are critical to maintaining self-control. And I know I've been touched on this a little bit this morning, but if you got your Bible, you are in there in Psalms chapter 119 and 1, 2, and 3. It says, Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. And blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with their whole heart. And they also do not do inequity, but they walk in his ways. Amen? Amen. The word of God is true and wonderful. Who would say that? Amen. Who would give God an amen over that? Amen. The word of God, I don't know what your, your, your Bible may headline here, but this is what... This Bible of mine I got with you tonight says, says, God's word is true and wonderful. Stay true to God and to his word no matter how bad the world becomes. That's a mouthful by itself, ain't it? So no matter how bad the world becomes and how bad things in your life become, how bad, no matter how bad the situation or the circumstances become, we must stay true to the word of God. Amen? Obedience to God's law is the only way to achieve real happiness. Somebody say amen. Amen. Because we can try to do everything out there in the world we want to do, but we shall never find true happiness until we do what? Find God. Amen. Until you get a true relationship with God, you really don't know what true happiness is. Amen. amen. Maybe I'm the only one that was lost and found here tonight. But I'm going to tell you that the only way that you have true happiness in your life, I'm talking about a true foundation of happiness, is once you let God come into your life and speak life into you. Amen? Amen. Because before God speaks life into you, you don't have life. You don't know what true happiness is. Matter of fact, I'm going to change that word up. It ain't happiness. It's joy. Amen? Until you know God, you don't have joy. Happiness only lasts for a moment. Joy will last forever. Oh, yeah. Amen. I don't need another moment of happiness. I want a forever joyful life. Amen. 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 We already got too many roller coasters in the house. And I say that because a lot of times people that come into church, they, they ride on emotional roller coasters, highs and lows. When everything's high and good, we fly high. As soon as they get low, we out the door. We need some more founded Christians that's got real joy in their life. And the only way that you really start understanding that full joy is to know God's Word. Amen. Amen. To live by God's Word. Amen. In order for you to discipline your life, you've got to read God's Word. Look, I don't care how much you come in this church on Wednesday night, Sunday morning, and Sunday night. I'll never be able to preach into you what God can pour into you through His Word. Amen. Amen. Can I say that again? Yes. Amen. I don't care how many times you go to church. I don't care if you go to church six days a week. I or the next pastor would never be able to pour into you what God will pour into you through His Word. His Word is a living Word. His Word is full of excitement. It is full of life. It is full of fire. It's full of knowledge. It's full of hell. It's full of guidance. It's full of strength. It's full of everything that you need at the very moment, guess what, that you need. Because see, Just as my phone don't pick up and I'm somewhere that it won't pick up, God always will. Amen. Just as you go through it a bad day, your full encounter with God shall help you through that day. Right. See, this is the reason this message, I felt like this series that God poured on me about self-control is so important to young Christians. And to immature Christians. Yes, I say immature Christians. I don't care if you've been saved 30 years. If you're still immature, you're immature. Right. We got a lot of churches today that still running around with 30 year old veteran Christians that are still immature. And it's because they won't let God 
have control of their life. They say, well, Pastor, I've been trying to get in touch and feel with the Holy Ghost for 25 years. Wow. Uh, I don't have to try. Wow. And then I have this say, well, Pastor, I want what you got. Oh, I heard him. I hear him say all the time, Brother Gene, I, I want what that one's got. Why would you want something that somebody else has got when God can give you everything that he wants to give you if you will get out of the way and let God work in your life? Amen. Amen. If you will let God work, he'll move. When you stand in his way, he can't move. The Holy Ghost is not going to grab you, move you out of the way. To excite you. That's right. Ain't gonna happen. No. You ever had God show up and drag you out your pew? No. So why do you think the Spirit of God is gonna move you and you won't move? It's not gonna happen. It is very critical to a Christian's walk to know and understand what the Holy Ghost is about in your life. Amen. Not in my life. In your life. And in your life. And in your life. It's in all of our lives. Because what the Holy Ghost allows me to do, they may, hey, that Spirit of God might have something bigger and better for you. And if you don't have that, when things come at you next week at work, when things come at you at home, you don't know how to handle because you don't know how to let God pour into you to a fashion to keep you under control from self-destruction like I talked about this morning. Now some people don't like to hear that because they like to be in control. They, can, they like what I like to call control freaks. Come on. <laughs> There's a lot of control freaks. I'm not being ugly, but they are. God cannot use you when you think that you're stronger than God. Come on. I'm speaking real tonight. You cannot be used and you will never grow trying to tell God how much control of your life you're going to allow him to have. Right. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. That's deep. God's not asking you to let him have a little bit of control. He don't want 25 or 50 percent of you. He wants the whole thing. Right. And without getting the whole thing, you're never going to grow the way God wants you to grow. Amen. Right. He's not going to accept 50%. That's right. He's only going to take 100. Without 100 you, he don't, he's not going to take it. That's right. And then we go and we, we run around so many times thinking that somebody else has got something that we should have had. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. People running around the church all the time thinking and calling somebody out about what they got. Well, I've been trying to speak in tongues for 20 years. Well, maybe you prayed about it. You might have already had it. God is not going to give you a gift that you ain't willing to receive. Oh, he gets so deep in this message here, it's unreal. See, a gift from God ain't like St. Nick with a present under your tree that somebody's just going to slide to you. It's got your name on it. you got to be willing to receive that gift before God offers it to you. Amen. That's why it is so important for Christians to understand what the Holy Ghost and the power of God is really about. It ain't about just coming in here as Brother Ricky and some of these others I've had. I, I, I've heard say I've never seen the beehive hair since I went to church back then. But it ain't about coming in church and shaking their hands and the bobby pins fell out and all this stuff and running around all in the church. It ain't about all that. It is about being obedient to the Spirit of God. Amen. If God tells you to run, you better take off run. Amen. Amen. Now, how do you know that? You don't know the word. See, you got to make 
maintain your relationship with God. I don't have to maintain your relationship with God. It ain't my responsibility to maintain your relationship with God. Come on, sir. Too many people come into church thinking it's the pastor's job to maintain your relationship. I got my own relationship to stand for. That's right. At the end of the day, you're going to stand for yourself and so am I. I got to maintain my relationship and so do you. Don't look at me and think that, think that well, I, I mean, he, he, God says done this and God says done that. God's looking at you to do the same kind of footwork. You said something this morning in your Sunday school class that stuck out to me again too, don't you? All of us want to make it to heaven, but nobody don't want to be the word to get there. That's right. Everybody wants to get to heaven, but nobody don't want to do the work. Nobody wants to sacrifice anything to get to heaven. Come on. Right. It's just like, I, I hate to be ugly about this, but it's like everybody that wants the mailbox check sent to them, but they don't want to go to work to get the check. We do the same way with God. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Now we can get deep in this here because of the book of Proverbs. And I ain't gonna call it out tonight, but we can get deep in that, in that list work. We go eat fat. But the problem is, is we got so lazy in our contentment in church that we forgot that we must work also. No commitment. We have lost our commitment to God. We got a commitment to the church. We got a commitment to the church. Are we committed to the church? We think it's because we come cut grass, clean the church, and spruce the church, and pay the tithes, and do everything else. We're committed. That's not your commitment. There are going to be a lot of people that sit in church for 30 years going to be in hell. That's right. They pay their tithes every Sunday morning going to be in hell. You know why they They didn't maintain their relationship with God. That's right. We need people. God wants people that's committed to Him. God don't need no more control freaks sitting inside of four walls. I said what I said. Amen. God's looking for committed people to Him. Not people that want to come in and rule the church. You know, any, any time anymore that I have people come up to me and say, hey, do you have a family at your church of rules? I'm like, what? They say, yeah, you know, every church we go to, there's somebody in there got a family that tries to rule the church. Wow. I'm going to tell you like this right here. I'm going to say what I got to say. There ain't going to be a family rule this church. We're going to be ruled by God or I'm going to have to leave. Amen. Because I won't be ruled by the family. That's why so many churches today are being devoured. And I will say it like this here with the cowardice in the church because the man standing behind the pulpit should be able to call it out the way it should be. And if you can't preach the true word of God, then you need to sit down. That's right. Amen. Come on, somebody. Yes. Yes. If you can't preach the real word of God, you don't need to be standing behind the pulpit preaching nothing. Because I ain't coming to you. Paul says he didn't come to preach himself. He come to preach the word of God. Amen. Hey, if we come into the church to preach, we come to preach the word. He didn't come to preach me. We didn't come to preach you. We come to preach Christ and him crucified. Yes. Because we couldn't preach the one that paid it all on that cross. There ain't nobody in this church paid it all but the one we come to serve. Come on, amen. Amen. He's the one that paid it all. He's the one that sacrificed everything for you and I. Yes, he is. To give us a word to live by and a standard to live by. I don't care if the world ain't got no morals no more. The Christians in the church is where the morals are to start. Carry out the word. That's right. Praise God. Y'all cause me to preach tonight. Bless the Lord. 
We must, we must maintain our knowledge of the Word. You must. It is a must. You can't get enough of Brother Jeff or nobody in this church coming to Sunday school getting all this Word. You must maintain your relationship with the Father. You must have your time set aside to read your Bible. You must. It is a must. It is essential to your life. Yes, it is. Right. Brother Jim talked about this this morning in the Sunday school class. There's a lot of people that can still get saved right now that ain't going to make it to heaven because they've never got a relationship. Amen. A relationship is something that you put work into. How many of you are here married? I know I'm getting ready to mix my lips in. But a marriage is something that it takes two people to work on to get through. Amen. It ain't a one sided street. It takes two to make it work. You get out of it what you put in it. What do you think the same thing is with God? It's the truth. you got to put in the effort and the work too. God still gave you everything you need to get to where he wants to take you. But it is your responsibility to put the effort and go to work to do what God has laid out for Amen. you. Amen. Amen. It's not rocket right science. Thank you, Lord. I hear people all the time say, man, it's hard being a Christian. No, it was hard being a lost sinner. Amen. It ain't hard for me to live right. It's because I got a firm foundation. Amen. If you get your foundation right, it ain't hard to live for the Lord. That's right. It ain't hard to live for the Lord. The same one that took alcohol. The same one that took cigarettes. The same one that took custom. It's the same one that will stand you up on your feet and put a smile on your face. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. It ain't hard. Right. Next time you walk by a Christian and say, man, it's hard to be. It's hard to be saved. So, well, brother, your relationship must not be where it needs to be. You might want to find yourself on hour. Amen. Amen. I ain't saying this all the time. A bed of roses. No, it ain't. But it ain't hard for me to live for God. The only reason why a lot of us say it's so hard to live for God is because we haven't been sanctified yet. Can, can somebody say amen? amen. Yes. There's a process. You don't get just saved and go sit back down and be a stump on the log. There's a process. It's like a process of elimination. Bam, 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 bam. And then God lines you up the way he wants you. Amen. Amen. But when you stop working for God, you become that stuff on the rock. Because you quit putting up the work to do that God has already told you to do. And you know, there's going to be many of us that go through trials and struggles more than some others. There's going to be some of us that have to go through a lot more stuff than others go through. I, I mean, I can't explain it. I just have to live that way. That's just the way it is. I see people all the time as good people, as good Christian people that seem like they go through hell, man. And you wonder why. Your heart goes out to them like, you know, why do they have to go through this all the time? It's not my place to have that answer. When they make it to heaven, God will show them why. But we still must stay faithful. We still must stay faithful. Everybody say faithful at night. Faithful. We must stay faithful. We must stay the course. Say you. Even though the things come in our way that we don't understand, we still must understand that God is faithful. Yes, He is. He's always been faithful. Amen. He's never stopped being faithful. That's right. And He's always going to be faithful to every one of us. Every one of us tonight. I want to go right on into Ephesians right here to try to close us out tonight. Ephesians chapter 5. I want to make sure I got my Bible right. 15 through 21. And we're talking here for a moment about walking in wisdom. Everybody get here and just say amen, just like you with me. Amen. 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 Okay. It says, see then that you walk carefully. I wrote that in because that's what this means. He wants you to walk carefully, not as fools, but as wise men. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. You buying and you winning back the time because the day and hour that we live in is evil right now, people. Yes, it is. It says, therefore, do not be unwise, 
But understand what the will of the Lord is. Let me stop right here just for a second. Just for a second. Verse 15 through 17 right here. I, I, I just want to stop here for a minute. You remember this morning I said the issue at hand is what controls you. Does the world control you or does God control you? Right? If God's controlling you, then you're not going to walk like no fool. Okay? If the world's controlling you, the devil's controlling you, I promise you, you're walking like a fool. You're talking like a fool and you look like a fool. I'm just calling it like it is. If God's in control of us, then we ain't got no foolishness in us. Right. Amen? Amen. Because we're trying to do what God wants us to do. Because God ain't got time for foolish people. Mm -hmm. hey, hey, amen. God ain't got time for that. God's trying to grow His people. He ain't got time for no foolishness. Now check this out. I wrote a different translation down here. In verse 15 through 17, I want to read you the English translation of what this, this King James Version says. It says, see that you walk carefully and wise, and do not be like ignorant people, but be like wise people, because you know better. Everybody say, I know better. I know better. Because you know better. And it says, in verse 16, if you want to read 16 to yourself out of your Bible, it says, make good use of every opportunity you have, because these are evil days. They are. And do not be foolish. Verse 17. Do not be foolish. Do not be foolish. Try to find out what the Lord wants you to do. Plain, plain, plain. Plain and simple. We walk around in so much foolishness. You know why? I know why. Because a lot of us as Christians don't want God to give us the answer that we already know God has already told us. We already know God has told us what to do. We already know the job that God has called us to do. We already even know the things that God has told us to lay down. But we still act as foolish people because we won't listen to God. That's right. That's right. You know why? Because we don't like His answer. Yes. We'll, we'll go back to church and we'll say, I need y'all to pray for me. And we've been praying about the same thing for six months. God's going to reveal the answer six days prior to the first time that we prayed about it. And it's all because you didn't like the answer that God gave you. You know what we're doing? Talking foolish. Talking foolish because we don't want the answer. And we're trying to pray that God would give us a different answer than what He already gave us. Oh, that's deep, baby. Whoa, that's deep. But that's how we are because we don't, we want God to do what we want God to do. <laughs> we don't want to do what God wants us to do. We want God to allow us to go do what we want to do. That's right. Amen. Feel good about it. Mm. Say that again. And feel good about it. So we can go feel good about it. And then we wonder why we stay in such terrible shape as Christians. That's right. Because the, Bible, the word said it's because we carry it on like ignorant people. We're foolish. We're foolish people because we get caught up in foolish things not listening to God. It goes right back because we won't maintain our relationship with the Father. We won't maintain it. God will speak this as clearly as He can speak. He'll say this as clearly as what He wants to say. And we try to stop it from going in our ear. Oh, no, God, that ain't what I want to hear. Oh, no, 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 no. no, I don't want to get up and preach. No, I don't want to get up and teach. No, I don't want to leave the service. No, I don't want to. Not it's tough, man. Yeah. That's us. That's all of us. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to me just as much as I can be anybody else. Because a lot of times we get caught up in God, that ain't what I want to go do. That is not where I want to go. I don't want to have to go do that. That's not where I like to go to church. 
But have you thought about the reason maybe God did send you there is because He's using you to help someone else there. Amen. Amen. But see, we won't never understand that if we won't be embedded in this Word. See, the Holy Ghost is empowering everybody. For the moment you get saved, it's just like that. For the moment you get saved, it's there. Bam! It's up to you to activate the Holy Ghost inside of you so that you know what the Spirit of God wants you to do. Activate. Everybody say activate. activate. Once you activate it in your life, then it becomes effective in your life. And until you activate it, you're never going to be effective. You're going to be destructive. You're going to be disrupted because you're not activating the Holy Ghost empowerment in you to do what He wants you to do. Right. Y'all remember a while back I preached that service about complacent? And at the end of the meeting of complacent it said endangerment. Everybody know that, right? Y'all remember that? There's so many in the church today being endangered to their self and the ones around them because they haven't activated the Holy Ghost because they've come complacent to being in the church. That's good to work, brother. Next, I appreciate that. <laughs> hey, hey, I, I just want to, I'm fixing to finish this up right here. In verse 18 it says, And do not be drunk with wine, in which dispensation but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting, boy this is a big one for people, submitting, to one another in fear of God. We do not like to submit to one another because we're too proud. We're too proud to submit to one another. We're, we're too big for that. Our pants is too big for that because we, we're, we're, we think we're above that. Well, your Lord and Savior come down to do things that He should have never had to do, but yet you put up a fight to Him over what He's told you to do. Amen? Right. I pray that some of the biggest things that you get out of this word, of this self-control series, is that you will never grow. You will never have self-control of yourself until you let the power of God dwell upon you in a fashion that you can't control. You can say what you want. But you will always be surrounded by chaos. You will always be surrounded with confusion. And you will always have a lingering of doubt until you let the power of God resonate with you in a way that you've never had before. That's right. Amen. Mark my words. Just a short time I've been in church, I've done seen people that have been destroyed by their own self-destruction because they claim something that they've never had, they've never been where they say they've gone, they've never gotten what they claim they've gotten, and it's because they never had a full encounter with the Holy Ghost. Once you receive that, you receive the empowerment to be able to let God control you in a fashion that you've never been able to do before in your life. God will help you get past the times that you ridicule people. God will help you get past the depression state that you stay in. God will even help you to tame your mouth to stay shut when you shouldn't speak. See, you will never be able to do that. You will never be able to do that on your own. You will never be able to even take control of your temper until God takes control of you. You will never be able to take control of yourself until God takes control of you first. It takes prayer. It takes prayer. It takes prayer. And it takes living by the Word of God. You can't live in the old way you want to live and think that God is going to help you and do things for you when you're living for the world and not for God. 
So ask yourself tonight before you leave, what are you, who are you living for? Who are you working for? Are you working to do what you want out in the world? Or are you living and working for the things that's going to glorify your God? I'm not telling you to go quit your job. I'm not telling you to do any of that crazy stuff. It'd be crazy if you go tomorrow and quit your job. But what I am saying is, is we can put a little more effort into doing what God wants us to do and a lot less effort on what we desire to do. Amen. Because there's people all around us. Our biggest, our biggest job right now after we have gotten saved is to try to leave lost to the same Savior that we have been led to. Amen? Amen? And we can never do that when we're living for the world and not for God. That's what all this self-control and all this self-discipline has been about since Wednesday night. Is when you discipline yourself to do what God wants you to do, there's other people that are around you that will be blessed by your discipline. There'll be other people being led to God by your discipline because you've gotten out of the way and you've let God work. There's people right in your houses. Maybe not exactly in your house. But there's people right in your house today Right in your house today. That are being affected by what you do and what you don't do. They're being affected by how you live and how you don't live. They're being affected by how you speak and how you don't speak. If you start letting the Holy Ghost control you, you will quit trying to control them. See, I'm not here to control nobody. Y'all remember this morning? We talked about that horse. You put that problem in that horse's mouth. I'm also going to say this here. You ever back the dog into a corner? Eventually, sooner or later, you keep trying to control that dog, you're going to get bit. I don't know who needs to hear that tonight, but eventually, you keep pushing that dog in that corner. Sooner or later, you're going to get bit. Some people need to quit playing with God. Because God's the one that's got full control. You need to let him control you tonight. Amen? Amen? Let God have the control of you. You need to so he can grow you. If God wanted to destroy us, he could have been destroyed us. Every one of us. He's tearing on as long as he has to give us an opportunity to get our life where it needs to be. He's brought everybody where they are so that we can go out and help the other lost out in this world right. get to where we're trying to get. Amen? Amen. We don't need to take advantage of that. We need to be grateful for that. Right. Amen? Amen? We do. We need to be grateful for that. We should be very grateful. God has given us an opportunity to get ourselves where we need to be and be controlled by the Holy Ghost. Amen? I appreciate all of you coming out tonight. I want to give you an opportunity. Just, I can't leave here without that opportunity. If you would, you stand on your feet tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I pray if there's anybody here tonight that has a need in this house or would like to be prayed for or just wants.